Another quarantine week, another week with no any racing activity in real life. However, all this week, we've seen something interesting from NBC Sports Network. What is going on, NEA Nation fans? This is Ian Perez 48 here. Welcome back to another episode on Racing Topics with Ian Perez. This is episode number 11, and in this episode, we are going to be talking about the iRacing Short Track Challenge. So if you guys have not known what that is or been living under a rock, NASCAR and NBC Sports Network and iRacing came up with a plan of doing a Short Track Challenge that lasted from Monday through Thursday. And there were um, not a lot of drivers. Um, if I can name them on top of my head, uh, hopefully I got most of them at least. Um, we had William Byron, Parker Kligerman, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Justin Allgaier, Christopher Bell, Chase Briscoe, uh, Landon Castle, Kyle Larson, um, who else? Hold on. Denny Hamlin. Um, shit, I'm, I'm having a hard time already. Forget it. Uh, we had some drivers that competed in the short track challenge from Monday to Thursday. Monday was Rockingham. Tuesday was the Lucas Oil Raceway at Indianapolis. Wednesday was Myrtle Beach. And then the championship race on Thursday, which was yesterday, was the Martinsville race. So... In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing each of those races. Starting on Monday, we had um, our first short track race at Rockingham. And honestly, Rockingham is the most characteristic racetrack I know. And in that race, in I racing, that showed a lot because you can go anywhere in the corners. And it, it just shows characteristics. You can go anywhere. It's bumpy. It's fun. It looks fun to race on. So anyway, what happened at that race? So besides William Byron sweeping those two races, um, fuck, I'm doing terrible already. So, I mean, it's obvious that William Byron won race one, and then and then everybody thought Parker Kligerman was going to get the win for race two at Rockingham to advance to the championship race at Martinsville. But then all of a sudden, William Byron bumps a run. Parker Kligerman on the third corner of the final lap and Byron sweeps at Rockingham as he shows his dominance after the Bristol race on Sunday. So personally, Rockingham was the best race of that week. Next up, we went to the Lucas Oil Raceway at Indianapolis. Not a lot happened uh, in the first race. I think Bell won that race. Or who was it? Somebody else. I, I should have gone. I should have been prepared. I'm sorry, guys. So all I remember was that the first race, not a lot happened. And then the, almost at the end of race two, it was just a what the fuck fest. Um, not... Be, uh, Except Christopher Bell, a lot of a lot of the drivers were wall riding to get more advantage to catch up with a driver who was ahead of one another. I'm not an eye racing uh, player. I'm not an eye racing driver. Does that really work? If you guys do eye racing, let me know. Does that really work? Is that possible? Like, a lot of drivers were wall riding. Carl Larson was one of them. Hamlin, like everybody except for Christopher Bell. And then the most what the fuck happened of the week was Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe spinning, Denny Hamlin caught up to Christopher Bell, and Hamlin wrecks Bell, but Christopher Bell still won, so basically Denny Hamlin took out Christopher Bell too late. Um, my personal opinion about that race, eh, it was mainly... Kind of boring, but then it just turned, it just got turned to a what the fuck. I don't want to say a shit fest because it was not like Bristol, it was mainly what the fuck. So, I don't know. And then Wednesday, uh, we were at, at Myrtle Beach. Uh, not a lot happened. I'm so stupid for not, for forgetting who won the races. 
And then finally, we went to the championship race at Martinsville. Everybody thought William Byron was going to get it. I thought William Byron was going to get the win. A caution came out, and William Byron, Parker Kligerman, and I think somebody else uh, went on pit road because they wanted a challenge. William Byron wanted a challenge, not just an easy win. Which is fine. I can understand that. Eh, but however, Byron did not win. So, the 2020 iRacing Short Track Challenge champion went to Chase Briscoe. He won at Martinsville. I did not expect him to win that race, to be honest. But he was dominant after Byron pitted. And nobody could catch up to him after. So, congratulations to Chase Briscoe. And winning the 2020 iRacing Short Track Challenge Champion. So well, I do apologize for that bad review for forgetting this and that happened. Blah blah blah. What what was what was my personal opinion about throughout about the Short Track Challenge? Honestly, it was interesting before it happened, but it wasn't really the best. Like. There were not a lot of contenders, a lot of uh, drivers, so maybe that's why I like. Not a lot of competition, but there were some at the same time. But, mm, I don't know. Probably forgetful. I don't want to say it was boring. I don't want to say it sucked. It's mainly forgettable. As I try to explain what happened, I can't even remember what happened like, besides... Uh, the bump and run from Byron and Kligerman and then the, and then the end of the second race of Lucas Oil when everyone started crashing, spinning and Hamlet taking out Bell, but Bell won. Myrtle Beach was not rememberable. And yeah. Ryan Priest won one of the races at Myrtle Beach. So there you go. And I remember something. So I do apologize for the bad review. I gave him my best shot. So that was my personal opinion. That was my take. That was the review of the 2020 Short Track Challenge. It was okay, but it's mainly forgettable. How would I fix that if they did this again, even without the pandemic? It, what, if this, like, what if this was like a monthly thing? What if this was like a, a yearly thing? Because since quarantine, of the coronavirus, I racing became a huge deal. So maybe this could, maybe the pandemic changed I racing for the better. Now it's more popular, more popular than ever. I'm not sure because of the pandemic, because they broadcast the races. So if the um, so if I if the short track challenge became better in the future, if it ever happens, I think it would have been better if we had more than six drivers. A race until until Martinsville like whoever wins the races will advance to the finale whoever gets the provisional pick from Steve Letarte I don't know why him um, will be at Martinsville and all that stuff like make it like the more competitors the better that's what I think so yeah it wasn't the best but it wasn't the worst idea ever I mean, I'm not saying the the idea was bad, but I mean, like, when it um, executed, it wasn't the best because there were some parts that were lackluster, except for Rockingham. Lucas Soil was lackluster, except for the end of second race. Myrtle Beach was lackluster. Thursday, it was eh, okay, I guess. Um, the interesting parts of the driver-to-driver's com uh, communications that, you know, when you're racing, I I'd racing you can talk to another driver. That's pretty cool. But the only problem I had about that was and the NBC guys, of course, being annoying as always, um, interrupting drivers' focus, and then they fuck up one of the drivers' races. Honestly, they were fucking annoying. Um, when they were talking to drivers, I get it. You want to talk to the drivers and entertain us fans. I understand that, but I think they did that too much. It was annoying. But it is what it is, I guess. So that's my personal take of the 2020 iRacing Short Track Challenge. What do you guys think? 
feel free to tell me in the comments below because I know we have a different opinions. But of course, there's going to be always that one person or a couple of people that always criticize my opinions. <laughs> so yeah, I'm waiting for that too. Let's bring it on. So anyway, that is it for today's video. I never, guys, gave you an update about my my diecast arrival. I thought it was going to be here today, but it wasn't. Then I got the update that it was going to be here late. I should have gotten it last week, but the seller who was selling me those diecasts that I will... I promise you, I will show you guys. I'm still keeping this as a surprise because it means a lot to me. Um, he's an essential worker, so he was in the delay of um, shipping the diecast. So I want to say thank you for the for the essential workers who keep making the world round during this pandemic timing. Because money makes the world go round, to be honest, in my opinion. And I, I just want to thank everybody who's still working during this bad timing. And I want to say thank you guys for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe for more content. Um, follow my social accounts, Instagram, I'm press 25 and press 48 underscore YT. Like my Facebook page, enasco 40 enation Films. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube channel notifications for more content. We are almost to 300 subscribers again. And I want to say Keep subscribing for more content. And I want to say thank you guys for supporting E Nation. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.